taking the baby's feet. All right. Daniel. We're turning here. We stopped at number 20. Revisions and visions. Used 32 times in the book of Daniel. More than any other book. Father, bless the lesson today. And uh, the nourishment of the soul. May we grow today as you would see fit in Christ's name. Amen. All right. The complimentary book of Daniel is Revelation. What is the complementary book of um, what is the complementary book? Now, I, I want to deal with it when you said Lord, Lord. What's the complementary book of uh, or chapters for uh, Revelation six? Matthew. Matthew what? 24 and 25. See, and that's where he says uh, he divides the goats from the sheep. And he says, uh, they say, Lord, Lord, we cast out devils in your name. He said, depart from man. But see, dispensationally, which is a period of time, the raptures are, the church isn't even around. The church is gone. So it doesn't apply to that. It, it applies to uh, um, it, uh, it'll, it'll apply to uh, who, uh, how you treated the Jews. Uh, there's all kinds of things. You, you have the, maybe the story of the ten virgins and all, and those that had their lamps turned and those that didn't. And then the bridegroom comes and they come out and they're ready for that. Well, but you see, who are these virgins then? So you have to ask these questions, who are these people? And uh, in a lot of times, it, and it's called, uh, uh, in Timothy, what is Timothy commanded to do? To, to rightly divide. Rightly, no, no, rightly divide the word of God. So you gotta rightly define that. The Old Testament is not the same as the New Testament. And, and, and so on. And there are several different covenants and, and so on. So you have to be able to sort through those things. And uh, to get the correct interpretation. And to interpret the Bible in future, in future events, what do we normally call that? It to uh, to um, predict future events. What's that called? One prophecy. Other. Prophecy. How can you prophesy? Now, what do you and I prophesy according to what? The Revelation. According to what's recorded. But if you talk to a charismatic, <laughs> they interpret that as they're, they're making it up on the fly. I got this revelation. And I eat a lot of spaghetti and uh, meat of all. And this is what's going to happen. And none of the above happens. So what does, what does prophecy mean? So we prophesy according to what this book says. Not according to what you make up. Now, that, that part of those gifts are still here. And some of those gifts are not here. Prophesy to make up some new revelation, but we have the full revelation. So you can't be predicting or making stuff up. So you've got to be able to rightly divide the word of God. You know, such as who are these virgins and, and they're waiting for the, the bridegroom to come and, uh, and uh, you know, at the very end, uh, I always say this, the, uh, the bride and the, uh, the spirit and the bride say, come. Well, who are they inviting at the end? At the very end of the Bible, the bridegroom and the, I mean the uh, the spirit and the uh, and the bride 
Does the bride invite people to her own bed? She invites people to her wedding. But she's not invited to the wedding. She's the one doing the inviting. So you have to be able to sort those things out and, and decide who, who these people are. And so it's not always talking to the same group. All right. So now, uh, then how, how would you apply then uh, if the groom, uh, I mean the bride and the spirit say come, then spiritualize that. The, the, if we're the bride, we're inviting other people to come, but they're not to be, it, it, actually those people then are not becoming part of the church. The church is the bride. And she doesn't invite herself to the, you know, that's why we say there's different, there's different people involved here. And who's, such as John the Baptist, who was he, we brought this up a week ago or so. What is he calling himself? He is the friend of the groom. He's the, and, and the bride is not the friend of the groom. And who is, and who is the friend of the groom? He appears as the wet individual in the Bible. He comes to prepare the way. No, John the Baptist. Said so John the Baptist is not. He's not the church. So all these people fit in differently. And so the Great Supper. I know people were um, would would ask me about that. The, invited to the Great Supper as guests for the supper. Maybe maybe, the, maybe the friend, when you have a wedding, you invite your friend. Maybe those are the angels. Well, no, it could be, we would call them, they, they could be Old Testament saints. Oh. Old Testament saints, tribulation saints, and, and so on, that are being invited. And uh, such as... Uh, uh, the evangelist comes in and he says, we got to get busy because the Lord won't come back until the, the last person is saved. And the whole world has to hear it. Well, there's two verses that says the whole world already has heard it. See, I would bring this stuff up. It just blows holes in those documents. It just, it just blows holes in all those documents. That people, people come in and get everybody all riled up. And when they get all people all riled up, it's because there's a great ignorance of the Word of God. They just don't know what it says. Why would they be the people, the Old Testament saints? Oh, I don't know. Right at this moment, I guess what I'm saying. Huh? Yeah, where do they fit in? And then, uh, such as the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the daughter of the uh, king has attendance numbers, you know, such as that picture there. There's the attendance of what Psalm is that Psalm 1. Anybody recall? Psalm 45. Anyway, back to here. I, th I thought I'd bring it up because it will come up. Here. Uh, the book of Daniel is the Old Testament apocalypse. The book of Revelation is the New Testament apocalypse. They would... Uh, you would use that as a complementary book to teach from. Apocalypse means an unveiling of the secret purposes of God, and it unveils that. Uh, by the way, what is the what, what is the verse about secret things? Where's that found? Isaiah chapter forty-five. It's Isaiah chapter forty-five. Okay. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and look it up. It's Deuteronomy 29. Well, it's Deuteronomy. I know that. All right. Deuteronomy 29 29 says the secret things belong unto the Lord. That's what this, the verse says. The secret things belong unto the Lord. So, you know, they always want to look for this and that, and they're trying to figure this out. Well, if you can you figure it you get your slide roll out, they'll do today. And, and then when we get there, God still may not reveal it. It's his business. Secret things belong unto him. Can you be kept for verse 3, maybe? Is that what Rich is talking about? Uh, what Rich is talking about? Yep, there it is. Isaiah 45. Let's look it up. I will give thee the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. 
By the way, I have a commentary, one commentary in Isaiah. And after I've read a lot of that, you know what, uh, and these are old ones, you guys from way back. You know what they know about Isaiah? A little bit. Of nothing. <laughs> a whole lot, a little bit of nothing. Their guess is as good as anybody else's. Because it is. It can be kind of complicated. Yeah. A lot of guessing. All right, that's why uh, we, we don't teach much from Isaiah because, man, it's just a lot of unfulfilled prophecy yet and mysterious things in there. All right, it means the unveiling of secret purposes of God. Comparing Daniel and Revelation, they're both loved of the Lord. Why don't we go ahead and look up these verses. <clears throat> we'll look up, see if we can just get it to just make the statement once. Daniel 9, 23. Uh, uh, it says there, uh, the, the angel of the Lord, I would assume it's, oh, Gabriel in verse 21. Uh, by the way, the diff what are the differences in the uh, two angels, Gabriel and uh, Michael? One is our angel and the other one's what is Gabriel always showing up doing? Gabriel showing up here. And what is Michael always doing when he shows up? Gabriel's always talking, Gabby. And Michael's always fighting. Michael is the fighter and Gabriel is, is the one that makes war in heaven. And it's with Michael the Archangel. They're doing the fighting. He's doing the fighting. Gabriel's doing the talking. He's, always, he's, he's the one that appears to Mary, doing all, always the talking. Uh, Daniel 9, 23 says, You're greatly beloved of the Lord. Uh, let me get there. Uh, I'm come to show thee thou art greatly beloved. All right. John 21, uh, the Gospel of John. Now we go to the Gospel of John because he, he also he wrote five books in uh, John and then 1st, 2nd, 3rd John and Revelation. John 21. <clears throat> He's pulled up with the Lord. John 21. 20. These are things that they have in common between the two. Peter, turning about, see the disciple whom Jesus loved. Jesus loved him. The one that leaned on his breast. Both of them saw visions. Daniel 2, verse 19. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a, in a night vision. And Daniel blessed the God of heaven. So when he sees a vision, Revelation 19, verse 17, a 9, excuse me, Revelation 9, verse 17. Then I saw the horses in the vision, and then that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and jet, taste of and brimstone in the heads of the horses were his heads of the lions out of mouth, issued fire, smoke, and brimstone. But our horses in the vision. So that he sees a vision. Now some people, uh, some people uh, spiritualize, uh, they don't spiritualize it, they make it, uh, this is what John saw. What are the, some of the things they claim that John saw? The, the guy that uh, would always be predicting the end uh, of the world tomorrow, that guy. He's been, yeah, Herbert W. He would, uh, he would do this. Others would do the same thing. What did John see, according to that? You know, they had hair, hair like, he claims they saw helicopters and tank fire, tanks that uh, spit out uh, that are like flamethrowers and you know the stuff you see in World War II. You know what Jan saw? He saw what's recorded. <laughs> That's what he saw. All right, they both see, uh, they're both exiled. Daniel's obviously in Babylon. 
And in Revelation 1.19 and 1.9, he is exiled. John is exiled on the island. It doesn't say island. Isle of Patmos. What's the difference between isle and island? Nothing. They're both the same. I would say they're one and the same. The isle that is called Patmos. It's one and the same. Both are prophets. All right, Matthew 24. Well, Revelation 1 3 says, We're there. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy that is recorded there. Matthew 24 15. spoken by Daniel is referred to as a prophet, Daniel the prophet. Which, what is hidden in Daniel is revealed in Revelation. Daniel 12, he says, seal up these things to the end. Doesn't he, doesn't he tell Daniel that? Revelation 12. Seal it up. Revelation 12, seal of these things, and I heard, and I understood not, then said, I owe my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? Say, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed for the time of the end. So then Revelation 5, where are we in Revelation 5? Revelation 4 and 5, where are we? Very very well. No, where, uh, where physically, where are they located? in the throne room, and there was a lamb that was slain, but as it were slain, and, and he says, Thou art worthy to unopen the book and loose the seals. So if we go there, so it's, it's closed up in Daniel 12. In Revelation 5, it is revealed. Revelation 5, 1 through 5. Uh, we could just read verse 5. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the word of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. So whatever is hidden in Daniel is revealed in the book of Revelation. All right. The theme of the book of Daniel is the times of the Gentiles. Luke 21. So it would be this time when the Gentiles are running the show there. Luke 21-24, uh, the times of the Gentiles. And shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive to all nations. Jerusalem shall be trodden down on the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles are the whole world. Times of the Gentiles are from 605. Now we got BB there. I don't know about BB, but it should be BC. It's the second coming of Jesus Christ. Nation of Israel is under the domination of Gentile nations. I don't know the political uh, situation there and who's running things now. Uh, who runs Jerusalem? Or is it. You know, the Dome of the Rock, that's where the temple is. Is that part of, I assume, Jerusalem, or is that outside the gates? I, I don't even know. If that's out, outside the gates or in the gates. Jerusalem's split up. It's, it's split up between Christians, Christians, um, Christians Gentiles, and Gentiles and Jews, or Muslims and Jews. So Christians, Muslims, and Jews. All right. As a gen All right. So it's under, under uh, right now under uh, different leaderships. Plural. Key characters: Daniel and the three friends Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, and Dar Darius. What well, what are the other? Uh, oh, I, I see. We didn't name them. Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, Darius, Daniel, and the three friends are Shadrach, Meshach. 
We just didn't spell it out. So the personal history of Daniel, chapter 1. Prophetic history of the Gentiles, chapters 2 through 7. And the prophetic history of Israel, chapters 8 through 12. It reveals Nebuchadnezzar's forgotten dream. I mean, just be thankful you don't have to tell somebody what they dreamt. Oh. And if you didn't come up with the answer, what was Nebuchadnezzar going to do for them? Yeah, yeah, kill them and turn their houses. He, he had a big hang up about turning their house, people's houses into a dome. You know, we're going to knock it over and make it a dome. You know, he was really into that. But he uh, he reveals the forgotten dream. Daniel chapter two. Uh, if we let you go there. There's the forgotten dream. Uh, with the Council of Wisdom to Arika, the captain of the king's here, he answered and said to him, why is it so hasty? Oh yeah, because he's going to kill everybody. And so Daniel's head is in the in line of command to be chopped off too. He says, well, what happened here is that Neb uh, Nebuchadnezzar has this dream and no one can interpret it. And he says, well, let me have a shot at it. Give me a shot at this. Wouldn't you take a shot at it? <laughs> Was your time to get your head chopped off? So he's, uh, and so he organizes this uh, prayer chain right away. Uh, verses 17 and 18. Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to him. Hananiah and Michelle and Azariah, his companions, that that's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, those names were given by the uh, by Nebuchadnezzar and, and, and that crowd changed their names. By the way, Daniel's name was also changed, given it one of these heathen names. But in the book, they never they never addressed this that. And that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning the secret that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. They were going to get they were going to get. Um, uh, chopped up and, and so on. Uh, by the way, uh, so it is. It, it becomes a, a what we would call in a church called the prayer chain. We never started one here. If we did, it was short lived. We never had a prayer chain. Uh, was in one church where they had a prayer chain where we first got saved. They had a prayer chain. And what's the danger of a prayer chain? It turns into a it turns into a gossip chain because men are what? Evil sinners. It turns into a gossip chain. And so... Uh, I thought the women were gossipers. Well, here it was the women. Are, well, there's no women in there. Did he didn't have those friends. He, he made Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Part of the, I mean, that's where you could come up with and say, well, we, well, I need to start a prayer chain. But you, you can't find that. Uh, I guess another place would be a prayer chain, maybe in Acts 12, where Peter's released from prison. And where were they? They were at the house. Uh, they were at, uh, I believe, John's house praying and so on. Uh, and uh, so he reveals his forgotten journey. They have to create this prayer, uh, prayer chain where they're praying. Uh, they do the uh, same thing. Where do they do a similar thing? And she's afraid that she's going to get killed. And they create this uh, prayer. Get praying about it. And that would be Esther. Esther, uh, she's afraid she's going to be killed. And uh, what's her cousin's name? Mordecai. So you better get you better get hit in here. Because if you, if it's not you, and she says, well, let's get, I think she said, let's get praying about it. All right, and then the stone. Um, Daniel uh, 2.34. 
this is the the, uh, the, uh, um, the revelation of the dream. Saw us, uh, thou saw us till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were iron clay breaking into pieces. And so uh, it's the, basically predicting the end of the age. You know, he sees this uh, great image, and the stone that's cut out without hands would be Jesus Christ. It smashes the image, it collapses, and then out of the ruins comes this great mountain and built the whole earth, and that would be the kingdom at, at the end here. Uh, let's see. Let's turn. I've got some cross references I used here. Second Samuel 23. Let's see what's there, just for fun. Second Samuel 23. Verse 3. 2 Samuel 23. Yeah, I'll write these verses down. I don't know what. Verse 3. Oh, uh, in reference to the stone. The, rock. the God of Israel said, the rock of Israel. So it's a, the rock. Matthew 21. Matthew 21. And whosoever shall fall on this stone, Jesus is the stone, shall be broken. He's the stone. Genesis 49. All in reference. Uh, out of is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. All right? <clears throat> and so uh, the uh, Roman Catholic Church wants to make who is the pillar of the first, the first pope? Peter. Peter. And what does Jesus say? And, and upon this rock I shall build my church. So they make him the rock and the beginning, but if you look at the verses, in fact, where is that found? That should be Matthew 16. Let's go to Matthew 16. All references to the rock is Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is the rock. Because Jesus is the rock. You can use all those verses to prove that. And, and I say unto thee that thou art Peter. What was his other name? He has other names. Cephas. Cephas. Uh, he has three names or four names. One is a Greek name. One is a Hebrew name. Oh, no, that's a, a Sons of Thunder. Those are those are names. Is Yahweh one of them or no? No, no. Simon, Simon and uh, Cephas. So one is, one means willow cane. He goes every which direction. If you can call him Simon. And the other means rock. Peter means a rock. That's, that's it. But it means a little stone. All right. In, in verse uh, 18 of Matthew 16, I say unto thee that thou art Peter, this little rock, and upon this common, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I mean, the rock, I, and he points that man upon this rock, pointing towards himself. I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. <clears throat> so, he is the beginning, and what, when it says the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, the gates of hell are down there. Jesus goes to the grave, and the gates of hell can't keep him down. He is the, the, the resurrection and the life. It's not that uh, the gates of hell are not 
we're not trying to break in. It, is that Jesus is breaking out. These, these theologians have all this stuff all moved up in, in these interpretations. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That Jesus is coming out of there and the church is coming out. Coming out from, uh, from the grave. Well, where else would you uh, see those gates? When you have gates and you're in prison, what do you rub the tin cup on? Bars? Bars. I think if you look it up in Jonah, in Jonah, I think it's in Jonah. And he goes down there. There's the belly of hell cried. Maybe I'm wrong. The weeds are around us. Okay, verse 6. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains and the earth with her bars. The earth with her bars. Like jail. And what happened in Jonah? He came out. He came out of that. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Jesus is, we're coming out of the grave. That's what it means. Uh, I, I know that on the radio, one, one preacher says, we're going to storm the gates of hell. Don't ask me why. They're, they're not, and he's not talking about the resurrection. He, he's talking, we're going to fight the devil. I don't know. I don't know. They, they, that's how they, you got to keep the hillbillies coming and, with the, and keep the money flowing. Alright, so the stone is Jesus Christ. In Daniel chapter 3, go to Daniel 3, verse 2. And what we have to put here, we're way over. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to, to gather together the princes, the governors. Alright, a governor. You know what a governor is. Somebody that governs and they're in charge. What does the new Bible say? The NIV says what? I mean, it, 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 you should be reading in the NIV. What does the NIV say? President? Huh? President? Set track. A set track. That is in the dictionary. And it doesn't belong there. You know what word belongs there? Governor. Governor. Okay. And we will stop there. And pick it up in the golden image, and then going into the um, burning fiery furnace. Father, bless on the preaching.